But um, we'll, look, we'll move on, Davo. You you said um, you wanted to talk about the best sports book. And I was thinking, mm. oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah, sounds like a grand topic, you know. And I was trying to think back, because I stopped reading, like, players' autobiographies a long time ago. Because yeah. they all yeah. became the, just the same repetitive stuff. You're so, you've got such a insight into most players' lives mm. now. You know, it's splashed all over the media. It's on Twitter. It's on everything. And people seem to know everything about every backstory. There's enough rumors. And sometimes a book will come out. And you see the quotes that clarify something. And then the book's not worth reading. But I had to think back to a book I read, um, and it would have been Paul McGrath's book, uh, Back from the Brink, I think mm. it was called. Mm. And look, that was that was a an amazing book, um, just mm. a harrowing story of his life, um, and you know the alcohol abuse and how it gripped him, and uh, he did tough upbringing as well, and uh, you know, like you won't read. A book that takes hold of you, like mm. like Palm Grass book, very often. You know, it's such a such a great character, such a great player, and and for for alcohol to take over his life the way it did, and the depression and and everything. But um, you 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 spoke about uh, Robert Enke's book and that won an award, and uh, the goalkeeper that took his took his own mm. life. So, um, that was kind of the inspiration behind your um your topic and it's it's a very serious um topic as well and we see a lot of sports men and women um struggling a lot with their mental health and openly talking about it so i think it's important we we uh we, we treat this subject and talk about it here um so i'll let you take it away and, and just let, what you're thinking yeah look us. i suppose listen oh listen we're all this far and we come up with four topics and look there's only so much the boys do a great job in the fat back for with transfer stuff and stuff like there's only so much stuff we can you know that you can you can bang on about as regarding pre-season and also we just kind of had to think i i, I don't really I, I don't really read autobiographies um I'm, I'm like you I'm, I'm not overly into them but I'd, I'd, sports books would be what I read, and I'd get through a lot, and particularly on holidays, I wouldn't do like loads of reading here. But I would definitely, if I'm away, last through books, and I'm just kind of thinking of the best ones. And I do want to get to the Robert Anka one, but there's a couple of them. Like there's a Game of Shadows one, um, which is about like Marion Jones, Barry Bonds, about the um, the drugs and sport. That's a, that's a really good one. But another one I liked really was it's about Italian ultras. Um, and it's it's not really about it's just called ultras but by the boys jones and it's not really about look there's obviously bits in it but it's not really about just fans kicking the shit out one another he actually travels around with a Serie b team and kind of witnesses them like dealing with socio-economic issues and like other clubs like so lavarno would be very left wing whereas ultras would tend to be right wing whereas lavarno and italy would be very left wing and stuff like that a couple of boxing books as well that'll be in the book really like you mentioned that already. I read this Robert Enke book. It won the 2011 William Hill Sports Book of the Year, and I think someone got it from me as a present. And I was aware of Robert Enke, all right, but when I read the book, it was just, it just, it blew me away. It just, it blows you away. Such a harrowing read, but like it's, it's, it's written by Ronald Rang, who was who was a close mate of his, or they became they had they certainly had a relationship anyway. And for people that don't know, Robert Enke played, geez, he played nearly three hundred league games. He was capped eight times for Germany, um, but he suffered with depression throughout his his career, and he kind of broke through at Magic Gladbach, and he got a move to Benfica that went very well. But it was actually kind of shows you about the way football can go. He got a big move to Barcelona and that's kind of when things kind of went really bad from him. It was, um, he was struggling uh, big time and he ended up going on loan a couple of times and kind of, I don't know the words you use, was kind of how it mirrored when he was at his worst kind of on the pitch when his career was really down. Like he was on loan at Tenerife in um, Peter, now maybe the second division say in, in La Liga, uh, the second division. But, he was really good in himself, but then when he was at the top level on the pitch, he was really low on himself. And it just, do you know what I mean? It turned out then in 2009 that he couldn't take any more and he took his own life, leaving a wife and child behind when he's Hanover's keeper, when he's in German squads for tournaments. And I just kind of thought we, it, my topic was just about sports books and to kind of ask you was what kind of, when well, you mentioned Palmer Grass and what, what mm. you guys, sports book that you like, 
that you have read. But it kind of just evolved in the chat before we came on here, just before we went live about kind of like it's kind of apparent. And now I know it was released out of one the 2011 award, but like, yeah, we've had Naomi Osaka uh, recently pulling out of a tournament uh, due to our mental health. We've had Samoan boys recently in the Olympics. Mm. Ben Stokes now has pulled out, uh, has taken a break, and definitely from cricket. And these are these are sports people, really, just at the at the the highest level and at the top of their game. Mm-hmm. And it's just showing you that the pressures that they can deal with and depression when they can get in on you mm-hmm. and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And it's just, I just think, I just think, it's, I just think, I'll let you come in now, Pete. I'm finished mm-hmm. kind of speaking on it, but I just think, even though the book was like in 2011, I think its relevance today is just. It's just so relevant today now with the way things are going in top level sport. And if you haven't read it, I'd urge anybody just to seek it out because it's yeah. absolutely brilliant. It's, it's I, I a was... fantastic, fantastic topic to, to, to take that out. To be honest, all I wanted to say was there's so much, so much being said everywhere, you know, about about how other people should deal with their mental health issues. Uh, and I'm glad that you haven't. I mean, one thing you've you've shone a light on it. But you, you haven't come down either way. Mm. I think that's very, very important. It's the last big stigma, mental health, you know, that's out there that, you know, it's almost like the gun is turned on the person. You know, if you if you, if you you look at, you know, the, the attitudes and it, terrible, horrible people like Piers Morgan who are doing nothing but trying to self-promote and try to audition themselves for the likes of Fox News, that last bastion of intolerance that's aimed at people with mental health issue. And I would urge anybody out there, any of our listeners, any of our subscribers, any of our commenters, if, you know, please don't don't feel any shame or stigma towards any feelings that you might have of, of you know, of self-harming or, or just inadequacy. It's normal. It's normal. Everybody goes through it. And, you know, it just, it's horrible to, to, to listen to people like Piers Morgan, horrible people. Who have no experience of what you know human beings to be honest with you go through at, at, in their darkest moments don't ever you know it's so important that people don't feel alone and i think it's good that people can identify with you know people that they can aspire to to know that they go through that those types of of problems as well and that's all i wanted to say and i'm so glad mm. shane you chose this as a topic yeah to yeah P, like i think it's important them um, the amount of sports and um, men and women are coming out and talking about their mental health because they are you know really good ambassadors for the topic because people do look up to these um whether they consider them stars or they admire them and when they can see that somebody that's an elite um elite sportsman or woman and they're like that i mean you're going to just internalize it and say that if the, if it can happen to them, it can happen to me. And Gar, I know yourself, um, you did struggle. Um, so you were saying you might kind of share your, your story with us. Yeah, yeah, no issue, lads. Uh, just over two years ago, um, my wife, Linda, found me out the back garden. Um, I'm going to be honest, news around my neck, lads. Um, did try it two months before, sorry, um, did try it two months before, sat at the side of the airport road and was in my car and was waiting for uh, a truck to come by, I was going to drive out in front of it, um, I don't know, don't know why I didn't do it, but listen, that was a time I, I, I went through a business change, I was struggling financially, I was I was doing stupid things with money, um, I nearly destroyed my marriage, um, yeah, you know, need to struggle with everything at home. Um, and it's it, it's it's um it's it's hard, believe me. Um, but I'm one of the lucky ones. Um, thank God I'm I'm here today. I can talk about. It. I've I've gone and studied a few things to try and help myself through it. Uh, I've studied in youth mental health as well. And um, to try and help, obviously, as you know, I'm, I'm heavily involved in coaching. So to try and see the signs in, in in younger kids these days because it's becoming more and more pertinent. You know, true kids who come from split how you know split families etc that you know you have to try and help them uh so that night lads i, I can't you know I, I don't remember nothing after um to be honest with you um i'm gonna be honest i was i was hanging um out the back um and i don't know all i remember is, is linda just more or less dragging me in the door and i went through the pa the process uh in france who were great for me for about six months um 
you know, uh, all I would say is, lads, you know, we need, we need to be careful, you know, how, how, how we treat people, how, how we go online, how we treat people. Um, it's it's not easy. Um, but do do look out for people that if you know, if, you, you never know. If someone, if, listen, lads, the one, one thing I would say is if someone's very outgoing and they suddenly become quiet, you know, there's certainly signs there, you know, and that that was just spoken about Robert Enke there, you know, who's who's in, you know, who's in the prime of his life, who's who's in a German squad, who's playing international. You now, listen, I, I was never near that level, um, but it does happen. It's more there's more and more pressure on us now as people, um, there's more and more pressure on children now, um, in regard to school, in regard to sport. Everyone wants to, you know, this elite ward gets bounced around in, in sport now for, for younger children as, as well. Um, and the last year and a half hasn't been helpful for them kids either locked up in the rooms. Uh, so I suppose uh, just look out for each other. Um, thanks for allowing me, obviously, to chat about it. Um, not it's easy. Um, um, not yeah. easy. Uh, but there was guys, there was, there was mornings, lads, I, I didn't want to go into work. I was, uh, I was, we were going to the toilet, I would get sick. Um, I, I, I would ring the lads and friends, the lads were, were very understanding and woke at the time. Um, now, I, just, I need to destroy everything, lads. Um, I need to destroy everything at home. Um, I need to destroy everything w w within my own family as well. Um, so, uh, it, it was tough, guys, but I would say just, you know, look, look out for those close to you because it's so true. You never know what is going on around you, um, especially nowadays. People are struggling for more financially. Um, I don't know what's happened the last five, ten years, but uh, um, money money is not as readily available, I suppose, for people now. I suppose, which, which is a huge added pressure on people nowadays. Um, I know I'm getting slightly off top, topic of books here, but I would say just just look out for one another, guys. Yeah, mm. yeah. Gar, I think I speak for everyone. Um, I'm going to say I'm blown away with that story and uh, fair play to you for having the bravery um, and the honesty to, to share that story because I think it's important people do share those experiences. And one thing you said there um, was you don't know what's going on. Like somebody who's struggling with their mental health doesn't have to be talking about it all the time or showing signs that they've self-harmed or, 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 you know, have a history. Like, this thing can happen very quickly. Like, someone can go from from being fine to suicidal within a matter of months. And I remember a few years ago, I did a course, um, and I'd, I'd actually encourage, the only reason I'm saying this, because I really would encourage any, anyone to do it. Um, there's, a, there's an organization called Living Works. Um, they're Canadian, and they're, they're, they go around the globe, um, training the trainer to deliver um, a course called Assist Deployed Suicide Intervention Skills Training. And the reason I did it was because I started to notice an awful lot of people who were, were struggling. And not just like people that was obvious that they were talking about all the time, but people had gone quiet, gone into themselves. And I wondered what to do, because in Ireland anyway, the lack of mental health services is, is disgraceful. Like, you know, people are waiting months and months to see counsellors and psychotherapists or if they knew, if they do need to go somewhere to cool off and prevent themselves from, from, uh, take their own lives, that, that there's a serious lack of that. And what, what that course taught, there was two key things. Ask people, are you all right? And don't be afraid to say, are you suicidal? It you know, people might think that's crazy, but if if you say to someone, "Are you suicidal?" like it's it that's an accepted thing to say to somebody. If you're that concerned, they might say to you, "No, what are you talking about?" But it's not better than than not asking the question for the one person that may turn around to you and say, "Yeah, actually." And then after that, it's to find out have they a plan and have the alcohol available to their medication available to them. And if it is, you have to just take that away from them and get them to somewhere safe. And whether whether it's get them to somewhere safe, it's get a family member around them or a close friend around them or bring them to a hospital. And I, I'd encourage anyone like that, you know, to look out for each other. It's, it, you know, it's not good enough that we're all just talking about it. Um, do something about it. Look out for people. Ask questions. If you haven't heard from, from a friend, in a while and that they're, they're, they've you know they've changed just to ask those questions and don't be afraid to ask somebody are they, are they suicidal because it might be too late 
you know what I mean? And look, um, I don't know, I don't know whether that's the right right time to leave the <laughs> show, <laughs> lads. Gar, fair play to you for sharing that story. Fair play, Gar. Yeah. Andy, I suppose if there's if there's anything you want to leave on or or a positive is that you know uh, people can come through it, um, but with the help of others, um, in my opinion. So if you can if you can help others or reach out to others or help others, you know we're we're in a group, and, and I'm gonna be honest, uh, Andy, um, I'm gonna be hundred percent honest here. That group was one of the things that saved me. Um, we have a WhatsApp group and the trippers, lads, and you know the thing is on fire. We're, we're funny, <laughs> we're funny, f- we're funniness, and and and, if, and I'm not joking. If it wasn't for you know, you know, my family, Linda, my sister, people who looked to me, and and that group of of friends in that WhatsApp group, mm. uh, with regards to trippers, people who I've got to know now from the last five years, who who we would call friends, who we know I could pick up the phone to any day now or or reach out to any time. If it wasn't for those group of people, um, you know, we, we I'd be I'd be you know, yeah, no, looking at a different avenue now. Yeah, that right. And look, WhatsApp groups. It's it's a very active WhatsApp group and. We're always slagging um, the bollocks out of each other. But I think someone put it right there the other day. We're the nicest bunch of wankers <laughs> that you could ever meet. Do you know what I mean? Um, lads will be slagging each other to the, the high hilt, but they do anything for you. You know, they look genuine. You look across yeah. that group, they do anything for you when needed. Um, uh, you know, we're doing the podcast since 2014, so seven years now. And the amount of sound lads that I've come to know that I only barely knew. You know what I mean? They say surround yourself in in um in good people, good positive people and you know and, and try and block out all that negativity. And I have to say the lads that have stuck with us and 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 stuck in that the group with the slagging and everything, you know, it's an unbelievable network of support. And I'm I'm Really proud you've said that, Gar, because that's what that's what we're only trying to do on on a podcast. It's just it's trying to end, like entertain people, talk about football, talk about things that people can relate to. And if our you know we've often seen comments on on uh, Twitter and up here, and it says that they this podcast has helped them along while they've been struggling. And uh, there's there's no there's no bigger compliment you can pay is if if. Yeah. What we're doing is is making teen life better for um for someone. It's uh like that's you, you can't feel any prouder about a thing. So look, I I think we'll leave it there. Um again, Gar, thanks a million for sharing that Bray story. Yeah, no problem. Um, Thank you. Like I'm sure um I know different lads in the in the group and on Twitter, you you've you've helped them out in the past, so I'm sure you've no no problem on even contacting you. You know, to share your experience of the health and any 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 time, any any time, uh, yeah. to, to, to anyone, Andy, uh, yeah. I've been there. If we can help, if we can help two or hundred and two people, Jesus Christ, yeah. uh, any yeah. any time, yeah. 